Okay, this video is to show you how to uh, design the capacitance in the transmod using HFSS from Qiskit. So from Qiskit Metal, right, the Jupyter Notebook, we already designed the chip and then we exported it to the uh, HFSS, right? Here is the design of the Qiskit Metal of the whole chip. So what we are doing here is that after exporting to the uh, HFSS, we want to uh, copy the whole thing to Q3D and then do the capacitance extraction. Since the chip is still small, so it is fine to do a whole chip simulation, but we are only simulating a portion. I will show you why it is okay uh, to do so. Right. So uh, the first thing what I'm going to do is to just uh, here is in HFSS, I click on model select all and then go to edit copy and then from and then i would like to start the qvd right qvd extractor i click on desktop qvd extractor okay then now i have a new project right so uh then uh i click this panel uh, which is a qvd one and then i will say edit and then paste right then it paste everything i click on fit all and then just unselect it, then I have everything I want. Now, uh, I need to be careful because the Josephson Junction, in, uh, the inductance was exported to here. So uh, I want to uh, delete this, uh, this part. So uh, what I will do is just escape instead of pen. Just click on here, press delete key. Also delete this line, delete, delete it, right? Now then, I have the capacitor. So this is the ground plane. This is the transmo, uh, one pair of the transmo. And by the way, this is not a differential transmo. One of the pad is the is a part of the ground plane. And the Josephson junction is put between this capacitor plate and this one. So we have a big capacitance from here to here as the transmo. This is the gate. This is the control gate used to control this uh, transmon. So we also want to extract the capacitance between uh, this plate, or which is the transmon qubit, and the control gate. Okay, and they are called C shunk, which I my goal is to have a eight femtofarad, and C couple. It is uh, from here to here. Okay, so now we will start uh, doing the capacitance measurement. The first thing that what we show in another video is that I need to assign the metal plate right as the uh, dialect as the metal. So I control use control and then click, control click click right. I assign all of this, and then I will go to here and then say uh, model um, boundary sign thin conductor and then right so uh we don't want co copper right so we click on copper we want to use perfect uh electric conductor right so pc and say okay and then uh it is about 200 nanometer say okay right so then now we have assigned the boundary condition after that we have three nets that we want to study right the, this is one of the nets I right click and then I say assign uh, net signal. Uh, let me just call this uh, the pad, right? And then I'm going to click on this one, control, highlight this one, right click, assign net. This is also the net and let me call this the gate, right? This is actually, uh, yeah, you can call this the gate because this is one cubic gate, right? And then I highlight this one, right click, and then assign a net signal. I call this the bra. Okay, so now I have three nets here. The goal is to calculate the capacitance between them, right? So uh, in terms of the mesh, I'm not going to do any special meshing, right? We will look at it later, but it will be uh, instructive to uh, click on this, uh, control, click on it, click on it, click on it, and also click on silicon main, uh, right? And then we say, I want to right click the fuel overlay, and then I want to plot the 
uh, not problem not yet actually we still don't have the data so so let's do that later so uh, uh, now what I want to do is to do analysis uh, right click at setup right so I want to save field so I can plot it later right I don't want to do AC I don't want to do DC I just do capacitance and I force it to have at least five passes right and yeah uh, maybe 0.5 percent it might not really fully converge but that is fine usually the solution is pretty good if uh, we have dense enough mesh then uh with this one i believe now i can uh right click the overlay right and then i say plot mesh now fill overlay right so i want to see how the mesh look like okay so now of course i don't have anything because i have not run the simulation so looks like everything is okay right so i said save okay uh i have some old history because remember i copy from hfss i just save with clean up and i will just save this temporary as the cap for example override the old one okay then i go to extractor analyze all so now you will start uh calculating the capacitance and we uh, while it's calculating let's just look at the results we can start plotting but now you can see the mesh right this mesh is very coarse in the second pass but it's going to keep looping right so it become better now now you might worry we are simulating the whole chip would that be a problem uh it actually may increase the mesh count that is true right so other places also got increased uh uh, because we have the inductor I should have also removed the inductance here but but it's okay uh, if my laptop can run then I will just keep it otherwise I would I should have removed all those inductance right and also other pads to make the simulation faster but let me let's just wait and see what we get right so now the meshing is getting better now let's just hold hold on and for now let me just uh right click the result and create a matrix report plot rectangle i want to plot a few things one is that i want to see the uh ground to gate capacitance uh no actually I, i'm not interested in that one but i plot it i want to plot pet to gate and maybe let's just don't plot one to gate right pet to gate right which means this one to here and then the uh pet to ground i put absolute value because it's negative right uh it will give you negative due to the way it uh, is calculated and uh i will also uh i'm going to actually look how it changes as uh passes as it go from one pass to another pass right and then create a new report right so you see that it get uh closer and closer uh right when we have more uh run or when we have more passes and it actually converge in this case i right click say marker add marker then i will add this one and this one now you see this is 81 femtofarad and this is 9.7.9 .9, right so let's look at the specification i want it to be 80 which is pretty good about okay I'm not going to change it much. Maybe I will improve the match. But this one, I did 11.2 femtofarad, right? Which is this C couple. But I only have 7.9. So what should I do? Well, I can do different uh, things, right? One of the things that I can do is just extend the length or I can make it closer, okay? So the first thing is that I feel that I can increase the number of paths to make it more accurate. So I say minimum pass naps, just make it uh, seven, for example. Okay. That's the first thing to have a denser match. Now, and then the second thing is that now I want to extend the length, right? So I want to just make this not visible. So it's easier. I want to extend this one, right? By how much? Let me double it, right? Because I had experience before I tried it earlier so i want to uh double the length of uh this one so i now i'm pen i have the pen right again i say escape escape and i click on this one now this one is create rectangle and look at this this is one point the size is 0 0.000125 right let me double it become 250 
Now you see it is double, right? So I just save it, All right? And then I'm going to run it again. So now I will uh, go back to the mesh, make it visible, right? Again, you will go through different passes. Now it's pass one. In every pass, it will increase the mesh. Now, since I'm doing the full chip, so actually I'm wasted a lot of computation time in another in other parts because they also uh, make the mesh denser in other parts. So I should have delete uh, some of the metal here because you see all this metal making this very dense, right? But I, I did that before and the result I got is pretty similar to this one. So I will just keep it in this demo. So let's just wait. Now it's past five and we can also look at the plot, double click, right? Now it's at past five. It was, now you see this is 12.7.8, right? But I want you to run a little bit more so that uh, I have a denser mesh. So let me look at the mesh again. That's past seven. Actually, it take a long time. Right. But if I try to move this to at another two point, right? So now this become about 80. That is exactly what I want. But this one becomes about 13. So it is too large, right? It's more than what I expect. If you look at this one, I actually want 11.2. So a little bit, a little bit too much. I need to uh, change it. But let, let's wait until this finish. So when I double it, it go from seven to about 13. So if I want 11, maybe I should not double it, right? So let me first, I'm going to first uh, turn off the mesh. And then what I will do is, as I told you earlier, right? All these are making the, making it very, uh, uh, take a lot of mesh so I'm going to delete or what I can do is just delete all the nine here see that all delete all this JJ right and then if I can I mean in other qubits don't know if that would be better so I'm going to do it in the C direction and then I just select all of them, delete, right? And then I pen it. Delete, right? So then I save it. That will make uh, the simulation faster for the qubit I'm interested in. Okay. And uh, this one, as we said, is too long. So I click on this create rectangle instead of 0 0.25, maybe we should just go to uh, 0 0.2, right? And then uh, save it. And then let's run one more simulation. I bet this time it will be faster after removing those. So then like, look at this orientation. And then look at the mesh again. The good thing, you should see that is I do not have much dense mesh in other region now, right? Uh, let's wait and you will see it. Pass four, right? Here I don't have dense mesh because I remove all the metal here. So the dense mesh will be here. Pass five, right? It is much faster now. This is not dense, okay? Uh, I mean, so it's mostly in this region. Six, right? Uh, it is faster.
uh, plus seven, and we can try to look at the results. Uh, we're waiting for plus seven. It's still not finished yet. Okay, so it's almost done, but here you see this is about, it is still running, right? It will keep updating. So this is not really the final results, but you see that this is pretty dense, right? So if I look at, uh, okay, it's done. Now it's 80.7 and 11. Let's look at this. 80.7 and 11, very close. So this is what we want, right? So with this, then now I know that, what have I done? Uh, we have uh, turn off the mesh. We have changed this one, remember? Go, create a rectangle from 0 0.00125 to 2. So we increase by 75. Uh, nanometer or what 75 micron because this is millimeter right so we increase about 75 micron right uh is that right i think so this is 200 yeah about 75 micron so we go back to be to the jupiter notebook the kids at uh, kids Kid metal to increase the length and then we will come back to do one more simulation to convert and then we are done with the design of this qubit for its capacitance. Okay. And the Josephson junction, we will just use whatever we need for the enharmonicity, right? Or other things. Okay.